A backdoor has been found within libLZMA, a package within the XZ library that does a lot of the compression on the internet. Now, the reason why this is such a big deal is that the XZ library in this version of libLZMA is used in open SSH, you know, the package that allows you to have an SSH server that gives people access to your server, provided they have credentials. By putting a backdoor in the compression library, it effectively gives that person unfettered access provided that they speak the right sequence of words into the back door. This story is still developing. We're still learning a lot as we go. But in this video, I want to talk about why this is such a big deal, how the person who found it discovered this back door, and what this means for the future of contributions to open source projects. Let's dive right into it. Also, if you're new here, hi, this is a level learning a channel where I talk about programming, cybersecurity, and a bunch of other stuff. If you like that, or just want to hang out with me, hit that sub button, really appreciate it. So here we are in one of the lists on OSS security, open source software security, which is a big thread where people can submit requests and submit comments about open source projects as it applies to the security of systems. Now, this list here is by Andres Froon. They're probably going to butcher your name, dude. I'm sorry. Um, he's not a security researcher. He's not a malware versus engineer. He's just a guy. And as we'll see in his list, he, the reason why he dove down this rabbit hole is because he noticed a few odd symptoms around libLZMA. Basically, he found that his logins to his SSH server were taking a lot longer than usual. It took 10 times the amount of time it would take for a login to pass. And also a ton of Valgrind errors. If you don't know, Valgrind is a tool that allows you to do uh, software validation and make sure that your project doesn't have any memory leaks. And he found that libLZMA in libOSS security began to fail Valgrind checks, which is pretty interesting. He found that the upstream XZ repository and the XZ tarballs have been backdoored. And in this article, he talks about exactly what he found. Now, what's the craziest part about this is that it's a backdoor in open source software. Now, how do you backdoor open source software? The whole idea being that it's open source. Everyone can scan through and read the source code. And the, the way this actually happened is really, really interesting. And he even calls out here, the line in this commit, the backdoor is not in the upstream source code that builds to host, nor is it used by XC in Git, meaning that the actual code itself for the backdoor is not in version control anywhere. What is in version control is a series of obfuscated make files and binary files that were used to test libLZMA, and we'll see that those tests are actually BS, and those make up the backdoor. What this person did is they actually committed binary files to the repo in the test folder, right? So instead of committing to the source code, a place that would be very obvious, people would see the output of, of, their, of their injection, they committed the malicious code to test files and they put the first part of their backdoor into an XZ compressed binary. Because if you run strings on that, if you're looking for evil stuff, you're not gonna see that. And the irony of committing a backdoor in XZ in an XZ compressed library is insane to me. But if you decompress this XZ tarball or this XZ blob and you pump it into bin bash, you could run it, but what it ends up being is this file that takes another file in the test directory, a second injected backdoor called good large compressed LZMA. It does some stuff where it cuts certain parts on and off of that binary. It decompresses that and pumps that into bin sh. Now we can see that the end result of all of this ends up being what they attach to this list, which is injected.txt. We can go ahead and open that up. And what injected.txt actually ends up being is a hook into the build process. So again, we've taken two seemingly benign XZ files, which are in the test directory. So maybe they're just binary files used to do some tests, you know, nothing too crazy. And it ends up appending this piece of data to the build process of the the problem, right? And, and you know, that's not so crazy. Like you want to maybe change up your build process when you're doing certain tests. At this point, you would never have noticed this because it's all, it's all been obfuscated. But what's really, really crazy is the author then injected this new CRC64 binary object. Now, this is where it begins to get pretty wild because in the commits, the author claims that they made improvements to the CRC64 algorithm. Please, here you go. Here are my improvements. Here are my tests. Don't worry about it. Inside the libLZMA binary object is where the final backdoor is. And by injecting this libLZMA CRC32 fast into the build process 
of LibLZMA, their backdoor has now been installed without you even realizing it. And so this person who, again, is not a security researcher and not a reverse engineer, began to go on and inspect that binary object. I am currently in the process of reverse engineering it. I wanted to get this video out before I did that. I want to talk about the current state of things. Also, there's a link in this list where you can go download the binary object yourself. Again, it is malicious. It is a backdoor. So be careful when you try to run it or do things. Don't, don't be too crazy just running this binary um, all willy nilly. But let me read what this guy says that he found. The backdoor initially intercepts execution by replacing the initial function resolvers in CRC32 resolve and CRC64 resolve with different code, which calls get CPU ID, interesting, which is a function that's injected into the code, which basically would just be static inline functions. Um, and in 5.6.1, the backdoor version, it was obfuscated further where they removed symbol names. Now this should have been a red flag completely because to have symbol names removed in a library object file is like complete heresy, right? The whole point of a shared object is to expose all of the symbols in the binary so that you can link them against the rest of the program, especially in the intermediate compilation process of building a library. Now the backdoor installs an audit hook into the dynamic linker. Now, if you're not familiar with that, the dynamic linker is a piece of code in Linux that when you run a program, for example, like OpenSSHD, there's a binary that has to go around and search for all the libraries that your program says that it depends on. Now, if you're a malicious piece of code, you actually can hook the linker, meaning replace code in the linker to make the linker do other things. So what you can see here is the linker overwrites the code that represents RSA public key decrypt. Now, when you're doing SSH authentication, the major encryption scheme that you're going to use is RSA, an asymmetric encryption scheme where you can exchange a public key and a private key to encrypt a symmetric key. When called for that symbol, when called being, when the linkers call for that symbol, the backdoor changes the value of the address of RSA public key decrypt to point to its own code. The PLT is the place where the function is calling another external function. When you call an external function that has not been resolved, Solved yet, you call the linker. The linker goes out, finds that address, and puts it into your ELF. This backdoor hooked the linker so that when RSA public decrypt comes back with an address, it says, uh uh, nope, my address is actually over here and points to its own backdoor code. And then once that backdoor is ran, it points back into libcrypto to probably check to see if the input matches some public key that the backdoor owner owns. Completely insane. They built a backdoor into the build process of libmzma that hooks the dynamic linker that then will tell RSA public decrypt, nope, you're not RSA public decrypt, you're my code, and will then run a custom backdoored process. Truly amazing. People are still currently running through the malware reverse engineering to figure out what the functionality of that custom code is. I think it's literally just gonna have a backdoor public key in there. I'm currently reverse engineering it right now. If you wanna see me do some of that stuff, go follow me on Twitch, I'll put the link here. And uh, yeah, guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. This this is uh, truly, this has been a crazy week between the Apple bug, the Linux privesque, and this. I, I don't know what we're, what we're in store for. Uh, so if you're interested, the CVE is noted as this, this CVE here. I'm putting all the links to this stuff in the description below. Go check it out. And uh, I guess we'll see you in the next one. Yeah, take care.